more your meta psychics. <laughs> Why? I don't know. You never say it anymore. Hi, I'm Liv. Oh, and I'm Em. And we're your meta psychics. <sighs> the pause. The infamous pause. <laughs> now it's happening. You see what we've done. We've made a monster. A Have monster! You guys figured out the routine. At the beginning, we always hit all of the buttons. But if you haven't figured out the routine, because this is your first podcast with us, open your ears, young lad and lassie, because we're some psychic mediums, twin flames, and we're here to educate you on all things metaphysical, spiritual, paranormal, and in between. Because we're your meta sidekicks. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you've gotten this far in our podcast, make sure you check out the last podcast because it deals this with part this two. one. This yeah. is part two. Part two. Part two. Part two. Watch part one. You doing it? Part one. Watch part one. This well, is your last chance. Spoilers. Well, you could also listen to part one if you're listening to the podcast. You can watch part one. Unless you're clairvoyant, then I guess you could watch You could this do whatever podcast. you want. <laughs> we can't tell you what to do. So today we're talking about the paranormal aspects of the Amityville. 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 Horror House. I, Em pointed this out the first time. She's like, it sounds like you said whore house. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to say it like a New Yorker this time. The horror. Horror. Oh. It's like a New York accent, right? All the people from New York immediately are trying to find their Guido friends to hurt us. So You talking some schmack, schmack. Behind in the parking lot behind Walmart? I'm talking some schmack on this podcast. Did you guys know that we have a Patreon? We're doing Patreon. We're doing it right now because I have it pulled up. We do have a Patreon. It's pretty cool. It's where you can talk about metaphysical schmack on our Discord server, as well as a lot of super cool ookum skookum benefits, uh, depending on whatever awesome, cool tier you pick. But the thing that you get, no matter what, is a fun shout out on our podcast and on the wait on the YouTube too. You put it on the YouTube's. Yeah, sometimes I forget, <sighs> and then it goes into the description. It's in the <laughs> podcast though. You gotta listen to the podcast. Tell your friends. <gasps> I want to talk about Africa really quick. Yeah, let's talk about our patrons first. So uh, <laughs> let's do shout outs. These are the people that you can talk to in our Discord server. You can talk some schmack. Savannah. Trinity. Avery. Cassandra. Violet. Peyton. Verena. Allie. Mac. Josie. Autumn. Thias. Victoria. Jenny. Laurel. Brianna. Nate. Bradley. Sandy. Nas. Sherry. Christina. Sushi. Anita. Katie. Charles. Holly. Krista. Flo. Ibby. Malake. Malake. You're a towel. <laughs> uh, there's a couple people on here that are towels that don't go on the Discord server. You guys are the best towels in the bed, bath, and the beyond. You are. Um, I know how to fold a fitted bed sheet. Wow, are you going to be a housewife? Because I can't do that. I feel like that's a mom thing. I'll be your housewife. You can be my mom, too. Wow. People already think you're my mom. <laughs> oh, God. I wanted to talk about Africa. Okay. We have, like, four listeners in Africa. That's pretty neat. We have, like, six listeners in India. Oh, wow. Australia are telling their friends. Nas. Our patron. We know. You've been telling your friends. You've been telling, what are they called? Kookaburras? I, what? They're birds in, in Australia. Okay. I think they're called kookaburras. Okay. And they're like parrots, but also like crows. They're like less, I don't know, how would you define the social stigma around crows? Daunting? Mysterious? I don't know. They might be able to talk. Yeah, crows can talk and so can kookaburras. So they like, <laughs> she's telling all the kookaburras because her name has something to do with the birds that are super cool. And I'm quite sure... That's who's listening to our podcast. Well, Not the just the kookaburras. The oh. kookaburras are telling the people about the oh, podcast oh, oh, oh. because Nas is telling everyone about them. Well, we are going to be talking about the Amityville Horror House. And then last Horror. week, in part one, we talked about the true car crime aspects because there was a horrific murder here. But today, we're going to be talking about the paranormal aspects of the Amityville Horror House. There was not a horrific murder murder here it was actually there <laughs> uh-huh i'm not gonna lie the last <laughs> podcast i don't even really want to edit because just like i i don't know i struggled with the podcast true crime stuff really tears me up you literally listen to a podcast 
where they cover paranormal and true crime. Okay, but I only <laughs> listen to it for the comic relief, mm-hmm. friendly banter, mm-hmm. wonderful attitudes. And you don't think we have that? Story quality telling time quality and the paranormal. I only, okay, I, I know that they have some <laughs> listeners that don't listen to one or the other because either they don't believe in the paranormal or they're like me and they are too scared by the true crime. I listen to all of it because I respect them and I feel like I can't like have a favorite. So even though the other person's stories make me want to crawl up and die and cry a little every day, I still listen to them. Mm-hmm. That's how I felt doing that other podcast. Well, <laughs> from last week, <laughs> I feel really uncomfortable, and it makes you me said sad. you weren't uncomfortable with the Lizzie Borden house because they're just souls. <laughs> yeah, but the Lizzie Borden it's house very confusing to me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, Lizzie Borden herself. I spoke to and or communicated with and she's a very like her energy and her sort of demeanor makes me feel the same sort of way about the situation. Whereas the true crime thing that we covered for the Amityville house is not something that is that solid and understanding, you know? Yeah. It's very confusing. Yeah. It's very horrific and it's very hard emotionally because there's so much upheaval both physically and emotionally when it comes to the spiritual aspect of it Mm -hmm. yeah so it's not as okay as the lizzie borden house the lizzie borden house is also not okay neither of them okay i'm just saying as a medium one of them makes me feel less horrible than the other (laughs) okay so if you guys don't know how we do these things we are psychic mediums which means we have the ability to communicate with souls so the way that we do these crazy famous haunted locations is one of us does all of the research on the location and the other one knows absolutely nothing about it or mostly doesn't know anything about it in this case i know nothing about the amityville horror house other than the fact that it is haunted and those uh, famous, what are they? The famous Warren ghost investigators. Mm-hmm. That's one of their most famous cases. And that's the only thing I know about the house. Yeah. So Lorraine Warren was quoted saying, this is the most horrible haunted place with the most horrible haunted bad energy that I've ever been to. When did they get called to investigate? Like during this family, the Lutz's family? I honestly don't know. Oh, you don't know? No, I don't know you. the okay. time in which they visited. Because you say that it's not haunted now or it's not as charged. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it also has to do with who's in the house. So I do too. That's like <laughs> how your boyfriend of so many years is like, I am quite sure the devil <laughs> himself could walk up to Jared on his cloven hoods I mean, and do a dance. Real. And Jared would be like, did somebody smell a dead body? <laughs> and the devil would be like, armpit farting in his face and he'd be like i think we need to open a window and he would have no idea yeah so we've already done the video so i kind of know what happens now but i wrote down all of the things that i told Liv about the uh paranormal happenings in this house before actually knowing the story so here is what i originally saw so first off i think we did in the last podcast we talked about that this land is actually a spot for the, it's like a Native American burial ground. And I remember telling her, it appears to me like the elephant graveyard in The Lion King. Like it's very quiet and very like charged negatively. But I should specify that the idea or theory that the land the house is built on is an Indian or Native American burial ground is strictly from M's medium mind. Got to. I have not found any type of actual physical written evidence or documented things about that claim. Cool beans. (laughs) Okay. So I see this man who appears to be a chief or a higher up within a Native American tribe. He has like a wider face, a wider set nose. I never see his eyes because they're always glowing. They're like white and blue glowing, kind of like the Avatar, The Last Airbender. And he has, like, a headdress on that is fully feathers. And when I was talking to him, he was, like, sitting um, with his legs crossed on the ground. And I could see, like, almost, like, particles coming off of him. 
Like, have you ever seen that Marvel movie where people, like, literally disintegrate? It's kind of like that, but he's not disintegrating. It's just particles that are, like, floating off of him. I wish when I walked by, my essence fluttered in the breeze behind me. (laughs) Jesus. Some people may call it floating a biscuit or crop dusting, but I like the way you describe it better. (laughs) Well... He gives me the feeling that he isn't necessarily someone that existed and then passed. I feel like he is a spiritual being that is almost like the gatekeeper of the land. So we went to a graveyard and we talk about it in one of our podcasts and we talk about a gatekeeper that was kind of like a protector of the graveyard itself. That's what I feel like this spirit is. I feel like he protects this land from people who want to come on and corrupt it and mistreat it. So I see two kind of like spirit looking things. They're just kind of like looking like energy or like cloud like things that come off of him. And one of them is light and one of them is dark. So he himself reminds me a lot of the Haybai spirit from Avatar The Last Airbender. And if you guys know the the Haybai spirit, Haybai means black and white. This spirit was the spirit of the forest, and he very much protected the forest from the people that tried to burn it down. But he has two sides. He has this really scary side, and then he has this, like, panda bear side. Have you ever seen videos of pandas? Yeah, there's <laughs> they're children. <laughs> Literal <laughs> I toddlers. I love it. <laughs> I like when they grab their little feetsies and roll around like potato bugs. Yes, so... This spirit has these two aspects of himself. So the white spirit, he kind of like goes into the ground and he almost like heals the ground itself because I see this spirit go into the ground and then golden energy comes off of it. However, he has this dark energy or this dark spirit that comes out of him as well. And that is the thing that kind of sways people that want to corrupt the land away. I feel like, well, okay, we talked about it in the last time where Lorraine was actually seeing this this tribal man, this Native American man. So I find it interesting. However, I don't think he's the one that is causing the mayhem within the house. I feel like this dark entity was placed there by someone else. I feel like this dark entity was like following someone that is very bad. I feel like it might be the master, the, what is the... The guy that was murdered, what is his oh. name? The head of the house. You think that Ronald DeFeo Sr. is the one that put it there? Yeah, I don't think he did it on purpose. Ah. I just think all of the dark things that happened around him put it there. Yeah, but I'm yeah. not entirely sure. So you're talking about now, because I'm prefacing with the fact that Lorraine Warren was quoted, as well as other psychics that visited the home. The tribal or the Native American man that resides on the land is the one that influenced Ronald DeFeo Jr., a.k.a. Butch, to murder his whole family. And she is, you know, quoted saying, Lorraine is, that this soul of the tribal man, Native American, whoever he is, um, is the one that pledges to, you know, cause mayhem and harm to any man that is on the property. And Butch was a dude. So her and a couple other psychics all said the same thing. However, M saying it wasn't the tribal man. It's not the Native American or his two hay by sides. It's uh, this weird dark thing that Ronald DeFeo Sr., Butch's father, brought there. Because if you listen to part one, he was by association carrying out certain aspects and acts from the related Italian mafia that his wife's father was affiliated with and you know being a really stand-up father with domestic abuse and violence yeah exactly but I also feel like because other men get affected by this spirit I don't think it's because they're men I feel like this uh Native American man I feel like he talks about man because that's kind of how the white people that came in like corrupted his land are the people that like he kind of goes after and pushes away but it's not necessarily man as in gender wise it's literally just white people coming in because that's how they refer to them as themselves does that make sense yeah 
Well, they would call us the white man. Yeah, exactly. And I don't think if they were talking That's what they're to, talking about. They're yeah. not talking about the gender of someone. I only affect men, not women type things. It's literally just the people that want to come and corrupt things because those were the people that took the land from the Native Americans. Yeah, and I'm quite so. sure if the Native Americans, no matter what nation they were talking, were talking to each other, they wouldn't refer to each other as the man. Or if they're talking about another tribe, they would say... The blank. Well, I think they got that word from us. Yes. Yeah. So that's why they just refer to everyone as man. Mm. So. Yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. So anyways, the dark entity that is in the house is separate from this Native American man that I am seeing. However, this dark entity wants nothing to do with me. It does not want to talk to me. It's almost like afraid of me so like i don't know if you see like a coyote or whatever you're going to be afraid of the coyote however the coyote is going to be just as afraid of you and run the other way that's kind of how this entity is because he's kind of very uh skittery and very glitchy and when i perceive dark entities that have energy like that it's because they don't have a lot of it and it's very unstable so i feel as if this thing doesn't really have a lot of a a consciousness or like a sentience type of thing. Whereas this Native American man very much has this consciousness and this sentience. So I specifically talked to this Native American man because he, well, he's the one that could speak to me. This other thing was like, don't talk to me. Don't tell anyone about me. They can't get rid of me. We should also preface that when we talk to other spiritual things or souls around haunted locations, it's not that we're usually talking to the bad or scary things at those locations. We usually have what we call like messengers or like guides and like think of it like a tour guide. (laughs) We have these other spiritual beings that explain information on behalf of the house and the scary things for us because we don't actually talk to those things or associate with them directly. Well, because if we talk to the dark things, they would lie to us. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> but also, it's not cool to talk to dark things. You say this thing's, like, unconfident, right? Yes. Dark thing? Maybe he needs to go to, like, some, con- con- what is it, <laughs> motivational speakers? Yeah, it's very much it doesn't want to be taken out of the house, basically. Maybe he needs some morning affirmations. Gosh. <laughs> you think if you put a mirror where he resides now that you knew this before I told you and was, like... Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, (laughs) that she would come through. Oh, you would so see Bloody Mary. Have a motivational speech. Like, do you think since he's, you know, stuck in this little red room that if we put a mirror in there for him, he would uh, be able to talk to Bloody Mary and get a little confidence? He would make himself Bloody Mary. Anyways. Maybe he just needs someone to talk to. Some morning affirmations. I'm just trying to help. (laughs) Leo wants to help the dark entity. So... The dark entity, I keep hearing the word mimic, and they show me ditto, like the Pokemon, that like copies other Pokemon's appearance. I feel as if this dark entity has the ability to make itself look like other people in the house. It also has the ability to make itself, like, make illusions happen. Because they were showing me, like, Peter Pan and the uh, magic that comes off of Tinkerbell, and they're telling me, it's all in your imagination. Like when you're a child and you have like imaginary friends and types, things like that, like your imagination is very strong. That's what this thing does in the house. It takes that imagination and makes it real. Now, every time I see this dark entity, I see it in this small room that I believe is either on the basement or the first floor. It's lower in the house. And I always see it like almost in black and white, but there's always like red paint or blood coming or raining down from the ceiling. And then the door slams shut. And even before we started doing this, that's what I see every time I see like hear the word Amityville Horror is I see this weird room with red stuff coming out of the sky. Really? Yeah. I don't know why. (laughs) Weird. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Yeah, when you said that before you knew everything, I almost pooped your pants. Ugh. When you edit <laughs> that, that is, video, you're going to see my face. That is the most prominent thing that I get well, from this house is that weird room with red. Disgusting, vomitous, if you will. <laughs> so in our last podcast, we talk about, I believe his name is Butch, the guy that was supposedly the one that murdered everyone. Yes. Though what they show me is that I see almost like, 
a predator. Like there's a movie or TV show that I watch where they depict what it's like being a predator and you see things almost like in black and white with like a red tinge when you're hunting things. And that's kind of like what they show me with this man, Butch. And I feel like this man, Butch, had schizophrenia. Like he had some sort of mental illness that caused him to have some sort of hallucinations in the sense of like hearing voices however this dark thing knew that and used it to its advantage so it made it more real for him because he had the hallucinations of voices from like his own head but he also had hallucinations from this dark thing that made it very real And one of the hallucinations that I, like, see, I feel like he would see his sister. Is it Dawn? Mm Mm-hmm. I feel like he would see his sister Dawn, like, in places where she was not. Like, she, he would just hallucinate her, but also she would look very, very scary. And I don't know if this is her, but I always, they're showing me, like, a woman. I drew it, and if you guys want to see it, it's in the YouTube video. But half of her face is normal and the other half is like there's giant gaping holes and it's like distorted and corrupted and really, really scary. And that's how I, I think it's interesting because that's how last week I described when I was trying to talk to Butch that what he saw was that predator type of thing that you just described. I was like, I don't understand why everything seems like it's darker and there's red around everything. It's like I'm seeing Mm -hmm. red, which is weird. And then it's like when he would see his sister Dawn, especially the what he showed me was the night everything happened, because there's alternate stories of how things actually played out. Um, he shows me her standing in front of him, and he sees a version of her that actually isn't real. And it's like half of the side of her face and the half of the side of her body. It's more so focused on her face, like from the shoulders up, that it's dark and distorted and like completely out of proportion in space time yeah i feel like he has been seeing that for a while but she hasn't been there Mm -hmm. so his reaction to just get rid of it he may have thought that it was a hallucination Ah, like yeah before yeah there's this guy that's really cool on tiktok and he has schizophrenia and he says (laughs) one of the ways that he knows who's in a room and who's not whether it's hallucinations or real is he has a guide dog And Mm -hmm. when he says, oh, we have company, if the dog doesn't do anything, he knows that it's just people that he's Mm -hmm. seeing. Mm -hmm. But if the dog does do something, they're trained to, like, go to the person. Ah, got you. That's cute. Yeah, it's really adorable. I really like him. (laughs) He draws really cool pictures, too. Yeah. So the things that are happening within the house paranormally, I feel like this is a very, like, poltergeisty thing. Like, when people talk about poltergeist, this is, like... Where it comes from, I feel like this this spirit fits the bill of what how people talk about poltergeist. And poltergeist are noisy ghosts, so they have the ability to move things around, flip things, things upside down, that type of thing. Now, I don't know if I talked about it in the last one, but I feel like there was like there was some sort of possession. However, this Native American man was like, there was no possession. However, there was physical manipulation over people's bodies, and. I didn't say this in the YouTube video, but I talked about it in our last video or podcast where the stairs were really important because something really scary, really bad happened on the stairs. And I felt like that's where the possession happened. However, this Native American man said there was no possession. This thing doesn't have enough energy. If it had enough energy, it'd be a lot worse. So I feel like there is some sort of physical manipulation over the people's bodies in this case but because it has the ability to like create hallucinations and things that aren't actually there the things that would happen in the house I feel as if they saw physical apparitions of things but I also feel like they were affected in their dreams because it's a little bit easier for a dark entity to manipulate you while you're asleep I also feel like it does poltergeisty things where, like, things move, loud sounds happen, things like that. I think that's all of the stuff I covered. Yeah, it's wild that you got all of those things. Especially <laughs> the one with the freaking face being, like, Yeah, that, that one really got me. <laughs> shot off and the room that you were literally, like, it's like, 
on the first floor, like the basement, like one of the little lower floors. And I just see like a small room that's like not supposed to be there. And it's red. I don't, I don't understand what that is though. Yeah, because I see it. I see it in black and white because that dark thing makes me see things in black and white. And then there's red somewhere, but it's black and white. And then I see black or sorry, red paint or something coming down and like covering the walls and floor and stuff like that. It's absolutely just. <laughs> uh huh. People are always like, I don't believe in mediumship. Or I don't like, believe it either. I don't understand how I did that. <laughs> I know people don't okay, right. people think that just because we say we're mediums means that we like feel confident about that no so when stuff like this happens even though it's coming out of our own mouths we're like what <laughs> what is happening weird okay so <laughs> I'm on some stuff today mm -hmm. I apologize so let's talk about the paranormal of the horror in case you guys wanted to know so Em already talked about the Native American man, and I just wanted to touch upon that again because we did talk about him in part one. However, this time I had time to do some research with my uh, smart degree wielding brain. And I thought it was interesting because I tried to ask him last night while I was researching things, the Native American man, like, okay, well, were you part of a certain tribe? And he was like, mm-hmm. So <laughs> I was trying to figure out, you know, because I'm an uneducated, um, uncultured white girl in a basement with her best friend shooting a podcast. And I just wanted to know more of the history about what type of Indian nations or Native American ma nations are on Long Island. There is a lot, guys, a lot. And it's super cool. And as I was looking at maps of where the lines would be drawn for the different nations on Long Island... I said, okay, well, can you tell me which one, since there's words in front of me, that you're associated with? And he told me that it was, I know I said it wrong. I said Montuac or Montuquet. What did you say? Montucket? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Something like that. It's not that. I need to look at it because he's not saying it to me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's the second one, I think. Montuacet? Montuquet. Montecook, that's mm -hmm. what you're saying. Um, but anyways, that is, there's a couple of different nations on Long Island. So there's the Montecook, the Montucket, Stellicott, Unkejug, and the Shinnecock peoples. So I thought that was super cool. However, when I tried to look for, are you saying that at the first one or the second one, Em? The one that says Maine Tincock or Mon I don't know, because he's not showing me the word he's saying it to me. Ah, okay. So whatever one sounds like how that is spelled. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know. I thought it was Mon Montuquet. And uh, anyways, long story short, the Montuquet were not where Amityville is today. However, the maps of where the nations resided was fabricated much after the fact of the atrocity of the white people. And there wasn't, you know, those, it wasn't, the lines weren't documented of where the tribes lived at the time. It was done way after the fact. So I don't know how reliable the maps were that I was seeing, because some of them differed of where, what nation resided where. But anyways, the Indian man told me like, we, we could go from place to place. So don't get hung up on the fact that I'm telling you that it's Montuac and you don't see that that's where my nation resided on this map that was made like 10 years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. So anyways, I just wanted to see if I could try and, you know, put my sleuth hat on and see how much actual validity is in the statements that M and I and other people may and may not have made. So Anyways, I thought that was pretty cool. And a lot of the sources that I read annoyed me for various reasons, but a lot of them kind of gave the impression that people believe that it's the souls of the six individuals who were murdered in the Amityville house that haunt the house. Why? Exactly. <laughs> Just because a murder took place somewhere doesn't mean that the souls that were murdered haunted. Made me so angry. Like, but also, if it's a human spirit, why does it matter? 
Like, I feel like a lot of people don't realize a lot of times human spirits aren't the ones that can make things flip upside down. Like, they don't have the motivation to take energy in order to use that energy to make things flip upside down in your house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) God. (laughs) Uh, But anyways, that just annoyed me. So, I wanted to also talk about how... Just because a murder takes place somewhere doesn't mean that the people that were murdered are haunting the place. I know that goes against a lot of the stereotypes, but in order to try and find out more information about the paranormal activity that could have prefaced the DeFeo family moving in to the Ocean Avenue home, I found out who lived there before them. So in 1924, John and Catherine A couple, I don't want to use their last name because I think that's like rude. So in 1924, a couple by the name of John and Catherine M built the house. And eventually, as it does, they died. And their daughter inherited the house. But she was like, I don't have time for this house. So she sold it to Joseph and Mary R. And they ended up getting divorced about five years later. Then... They sold the house, and that's how the DeFeos bought it. So John and Catherine had it first. They built it in 1924. The couple for Joseph and Mary were in the house. They were like, I don't like you anymore. I don't want to be in this house. And they left, and now the DeFeos there. Then the horrible, horrible, tragic thing of the Amityville massacre happened, if you will. And um, 13 months after all of that, the Lutz family decided to buy this beautiful house at a very discounted price. (laughs) Well, <laughs> how you know something's haunted. Yeah. So <laughs> if you don't know anything about the house, the house is a five bedroom Dutch colonial house. It has three and a half baths, a fully finished basement. It's three stories. It has a boat house, sits on the lake, and it's in Long Island, New York. The horror. So <laughs> uh, some sources say that they knew nothing about the murder. Although the majority of the sources say whether they knew about it or not, while they first viewed the house, they did, in fact, learn about the house's tragic past um, before they bought it. So before they closed on the house, the realtor was like, hey, how do you feel about, what is it called, police tape? (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. I don't know. I was trying to make a joke. I was going to say oh, something else, but it was more crude. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, and you like go to see the house and there's a for sale sign in the front and they're like trying to move the like chalk off of, off of the floor. You come in and erase the chalk around the dead body. Yeah. You come in and your real estate agent's just laying in the middle of the Jesus floor Christ. and you're like, what are you doing? And he's like, ah, I'm just stretching. <laughs> Sorry. Well, they had to have known, right? Because they lived in New York. Well, they, I feel like they knew because you told me that they... Got a priest to bless the house. If they didn't know, mm, why'd yeah. they do that? <laughs> just I'm, saying. I'm just trying to tell everybody what the internet says. Okay. That some of the internet says they had no idea. And the real estate agent was a horrible person for not informing them. And then the other side says, wait, I'm ruining your story. You should tell the story first and I'll tell you after. Okay. Okay. So they bought the house. And after learning about the atrocities of the house, they uh, decided to get it blessed. With, by, with with a priest, because how else do you bless a house? If I had a house, I would just put some holy water on the... Oh, what? <laughs> I would put holy water. Water? Yeah. Speaking is hard. Speaking I would put is hard. holy water mm-hmm. around the neck of a goat. Okay. And then have the goat just walk around the house. Why? Because they prance. Okay. You ever seen a frolicking goat? Jesus Christ. Dude, the only thing better is a llama. Go on with your story. That is the most holy thing you could possibly do is frolic through a house. So, a priest blessed a house. Parkour with some holy water. What happened while blessing house? They got the tippy tap feet. So the priest walks up the stairs and the family's like, you got to do this room because this is where our children are going to play. This is going to be the playroom. And he's like, sure beans. He walks in there and he's like, oh no, I can't walk in there. It's too bad. And then he left and they're like, well, I guess... You know, this is where our children are going to play. It's fine. The priest missed one spot. It won't hurt anything. They just weren't perplexed as to why he didn't want to go in there. No, he told them. That is the most horrible energy ever. They weren't like, okay, maybe we shouldn't have our children play in here and move them somewhere else. Yeah. They were just like, "Eh, it's fine. They're like, I'm going to send it. Yeah. (laughs) 
But I feel like the reason why he didn't want to go in there is because this thing wanted to scare him off. Well, yeah. Because he's like, hey, you can't make me leave. I don't have enough energy for you to just put holy water all over me. That type of thing. He put his... So uh, he was like, cry. And the priest left. (laughs) Yeah, he put his sully face on. You know, yeah, scary feet, exactly. scary feet, scary feet, roar! <laughs> yeah, that's what he did. Scary feet. So, you know, they still yeah. had the playroom. The priest just missed a spot. It's no big deal. It's oh, like gosh. when you're doing a window. You just, you put, <sighs> er, 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 er. it's fine. So they ended up moving in. And very shockingly, mm-hmm. paranormal things immediately started happening. Wow. You had the run of the mill things, you know, voices, some tippy tap knickknacks moving around, some doors slamming, cold spots. But then the darkness grew. Things started flipping upside down. Poltergeist oh. activity. Well, this is the funniest thing because what we talked about our spiritual essence. <laughs> okay. Spiritually crop dusting, if you will. Okay. Well, I told, I'm going to talk about the stench in the house because it has to do with the windows. But in the video, I forgot about the stench that was associated with the crucifix. Apparently, the crucifix on the wall would turn upside down and then it would smell like dead bodies. You can't laugh at that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it's funny. Why are you laughing, though? Because it makes me think like Jesus farted. He farted dead bodies. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> they just said it was a rank smell. Uh huh. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> Which I, is why Liv is making jokes. Oh yeah, for sure. That's how because I she's terrified. So she's making crude jokes with comedy. I mean, whoever smelt it dealt it. So maybe Jesus did. He floated a biscuit at the dinner table. You know what upside down crowns me cr- crosses mean, right? Yeah, aren't they like negative bad things? People say that it's like the sign of like the devil or Satanism. It's like antichrist when the cross is upside down. Yeah. Yeah. But souls, whether they're negative entities or human souls or spiritual beings, they know, see, hear, and feel Well, everything. I realize that. So <laughs> I just like, don't know that you knew that. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I Because you're it. not religious, so I didn't know if you knew that. I would still deal with it with comedy. I mean, I know. I may be pooping my pants on the inside, but I will mask the fact that I will say outwardly to whatever dark entity is making my Jesus turn upside down. And I will say, if you just had to fart, you should have done it. Don't blame it on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Demonic entities trying to blame their farts on Jesus. It's been happening since the day of the ages. Now, the other things that started happening was, and I found this interesting because I didn't research this or I didn't find it when we did video number one, because I kind of thought it was weird a little bit that Butch uh, decided to move back in with his family when they got the Ocean Avenue house when he was 23. Like living with your parents when you're 23 now is still kind of taboo, but not as much because money's not worth as much but in the 70s moving back in with your parents when you're 23 i think is like probably weird do you think so i don't know you don't wasn't in the 70s i just know that it wasn't as hard to buy a house as it is now exactly my impression of the 70s is if you're 19 or 18 you have a house or an apartment and you're living on your own or at least with your friends and moving in with your parents at 23 is like not something you're gonna do but he did and where did he move into the house the basement. Mm-hmm. Dun, dun, da. We have a button, but we don't know which one it is. Don't touch it. Okay. So when the Lutz family moved in and all of the knickknack paddywhacks started moving around and Jesus was farting on the wall upside down, the other thing that George thought was going to be a really good idea was to make his office in the basement. And once the family moved in, The female family members were like, this is great. We're making pies. Julia, what's her name? The lady who plays Mary Poppins. I have no idea. What? Julie Roberts. I think it's Julie Roberts. (laughs) Julia Roberts. No, it's Julie Roberts. Something like that. It's probably wrong. I'm bad with pop culture. I don't think I've watched that, so. They're outside. It's Mary Poppins style. The girls are feeling it, making pies. It's an awesome experience. However, the boys are getting increasingly (laughs) agitated, ornery, and angry. 
for no reason. But they have these horrible, horrible mood swings. And the other thing that's changing in the house is the temperature. There's cold spots everywhere. It's like Swiss cheese of heating. And particularly the cold spots were around George Lutz. To the fact that he was so cold all the time that he would sleep by the furnace to make sure that it was running and working correctly, which I think is funny. Because, you know, when you hear like run-of-the-mill paranormal things, people are like, I walked into a room and it felt so, so cold. And then I walked out and it was like a sauna. But in the house, according to the family, it was just like you get next to dad, slight stepdad, and uh, it's cold. But then I go next to the kitchen and it's it's piping hot. Because the entities are taking the energy from the man of the house. <laughs> I really should, you know, be better at chaptering all of these notes too. Because I should add the the ADHD tangent side note of that. Kathy Lutz and George Lutz got married. However, Kathy was married previously and her children, Michael, Billy, and Chelsea, are from her first husband. So her three children are related to their father, in this story as a stepfather and they are his stepchildren. So everyone was getting angry. Doors were slamming, but then they also had the hallucinations and bad dreams. One of the dreams that the family would have was Catherine, the mother. She had a dream. Did I talk about a dream with Catherine? I think so. Yeah. I don't remember which dream it was, but that's where I thought that she was walking around the house. Oh, yeah. Sorry. They're really not wanting to tell me things. I really hate the freaking creepy hole behind me. It makes me (laughs) Well, what's in the hole, Liv? When she's talking about the hole, there's a uh, crawl space that's right next to us. We're in our basement. It's... Oh, I hate basements. So anyways, Kathy... Catherine Lutz, she was having nightmares, and she said from her nightmares, she was... Looking through the eyes of Robert, I don't know why I ever want to say Robert, Ronald DeFeo Jr. as he murdered his family. And she was able to give the media and the press vivid descriptions of the order in which he slayed his family. And they were apparently consistent with autopsy and crime scene reports of who was killed first and last and in what manner. And she was not there. So that's concerning. Mm -hmm. Um. The other really weird thing, and I almost pooped my pants when M talked about this, was the father had types of illusions and nightmares as well. So he would wake up at 3.15 in the middle of the night, every night, and they only lived in this house for 28 days, mind you. I should say that. It's a fun time waking up at 3 a.m. for 28 days. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) And when he would wake up in the middle of the night... At 3.15 in the morning, which was when, according to the crime, that's when everyone was killed, he would wake up to the sounds, he said, of gunshots and, what, screams, doors slamming, people moving, just weird stuff. But when he would wake up, he wouldn't be in his bed. He would be, like, out in the front yard making scrambled eggs doing yoga in the basement, just like weird random things, which is not okay. And one of the things that he said he hallucinated or dreamt about was he was in his room. His wife was not in the room with him. And he woke up one night to see her standing in the room looking at him. And when he saw her, the entire side of her face looked like it had been um, altered due to uh, gunshots and drama. Yeah, but you specifically said one side looked fine and the other side was mutilated. Just like the picture that I drew, guys. (laughs) 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 Sorry, it makes me uncomfortable. (laughs) So those were the dreams that the parents had. Now the family had a dog and it was super cool. I'm quite assuming because dogs are great and they're adorable. However, mm, this but dog But not was in ha- scary movies, guys. Sorry. <laughs> this, yeah, this dog was having a hard time. So... It's because he saw shit. Well, yeah, because he's a dog. They see yeah. God. Anyways, um, the dog would be outside on its leash doing dog things and it was trying to throw itself over fences and around like objects to try and choke itself to death. Are you sure it was trying to choke itself or was it just trying to leave? But it was like... Chained to something? Yeah. 
I mean, I guess they'd only find out if they let it go. Yeah, I don't <laughs> it know. just kept running for days. I mean, if I was that dog, I would run away. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess every time they would try to, like, if it would hang itself over the fence, they would be like, no, Fido, don't. And then put it back and be like, stay. And then you just do it again. But the oldest son, Michael, he had dreams of watching the dog try to hang itself. Or in his dreams, he would also, I he would be the dog trying to hang itself. And he's like, I didn't know what to do. And like, I couldn't not stop the dog from hanging itself. And when I was the dog, I couldn't stop myself from trying to hang myself. Interesting. And I guess he had those dreams for like the rest of his life. It wasn't just while they were in the house. Mm -hmm. Now, the last hallucination type thing that's personal to the people, hallucination type thing, speaking is hard, was the daughter, Chelsea. She had an imaginary friend at this house. And I listened to one source that said that when Chelsea was asked to tell the family what her imaginary friend's name was, she said Jody. And the source that I was listening to said, oh yeah, and the Lutz family weren't allowed to know who died in the house. However, the priest knew the family before they passed personally. So when the Lutz family talked to the priest and was like, hey, our daughter says that she has an imaginary friend that's a girl named Jody." He was like, oh, that's the name of the girl that died here. One of them. But, but her, it's not, right? It's not Jody. Yeah. The girls, all of the girls' names in the house were uh, Louise, Dawn, and Allison, which don't even sound like Jody. So it's not mm -hmm. like, yeah. I don't know. Well, I see her as a spirit. She looks like she's like four-ish feet tall that's probably an exaggeration like three feet tall she looks like she's like four or five years old and she has like a lighter brown colored hair and she just looks like a little girl however you tell another story and that is not the little girl that is a manipulation or a mimic ditto type thing from the dark entity telling her to do weird things but she is actually seeing a little girl spirit but I don't think she's necessarily associated with the house, but she's associated with someone else in the area. Got it. I guess Chelsea would be in her room playing with Jody, and she would be singing this song. And the family didn't know what the song was, so of course they asked the priest. <laughs> and the priest was like, oh, that's the same song that the girl that died in this room used to sing. So do with that what you will. And then there was an eye roll there as well. You guys should have heard it if you didn't. Shame on you. <laughs> Tune your ears. The other cool thing that Jody wanted to help Chelsea with was the, to be best friends forever. So one day, the mother came home and saw little Chelsea on the roof. She was like, Chelsea, what are you doing? So she grabs her off the roof and is like, you can't do that. What were you thinking? And she looks at her mom and goes, well, Jody said that if I jump then we can be friends forever. Mm -hmm. Dude, that stuff fucks me up. Are you kidding me? What? Shit fucks me up. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. It's not okay. That's why I was like, the little girl didn't tell her to do that. That was a uh, something that looked like the little girl. However, there is a little girl that is separate from the dark thing. Was she going to let her do it? Is that why her mom came home and saw her? Because the other little girl, the real Jody, was like, Lighting got her. Yo, yeah. we got a problem. Here. That's why it didn't happen. That's good. Uh huh. I'm sorry. When like kids are involved, it just really like makes me more annoyed. People, well, yes, to say the least. So that's that's why it's a good thing there's a little girl here. That's actually a little girl. Now we also have the flies. The flies. I guess upstairs in one of the rooms, and I guess also all throughout the house. But the one story I heard was. One of the sons was upstairs in his room and there was like 500 flies. What is that? I will walk 1,000 miles. There's 500 flies in my bedroom. Sorry, I don't know. That's just I what don't know my, either. my head started talking about. So Jeez. I guess he got like the comic strip section out of the newspaper and was like, hey, yeah, take this, take that. I have no match for me. And uh, he killed all of the flies in his room and then went downstairs to go get his parents and be like, you know that fly problem we had? It's not a problem they anymore. took care of it. <laughs> and when they went upstairs to see his uh, his accomplishment, there was no flies. Yeah. Because like, this thing makes things happen 
in your imagination. <laughs> he was not invited to SpongeBob and Patrick's box. He was invited, oh, but it wasn't SpongeBob and Patrick's box. That was the box next to it. Got in the wrong box. Oh, okay. Was oh, okay. there actually a box next to it? No, but that's what this box is. Oh, okay. <laughs> the red box? It's the red box. Jesus. You'll figure out what that means. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. I guess the kids were even more annoyed because when they would try to skip school and be, like, cool kids, they were like, we feel like the horrible, horrible dark entity in our house follows us around. Honestly, do you think that the demon in the red room was following them while they skipped class, or do you think it was their morals? I don't know, Liv. <laughs> Jesus. They're blaming this horrible gut feeling on the fact of they had a monster in their house, but not even giving a slight whiff of a notion Holy. of that. Maybe they felt bad because they were skipping school, playing hooky. Maybe it was their grandma looking down on them like, tsk, tsk, tsk. Well, did anything bad happen? I don't think so. When they were away from the house? I don't think so. I don't know Not that. that I know of. Mm-hmm. There wasn't anything that was explicitly expressed explicitly. in the things that I read. I see. I think it was just the feeling that they had that they knew that they should have been in school getting an education. My God. Becoming learning doctorates. Doctrines. Anyways. <laughs> the weird thing that also freaks me out, the two, I would say the two scariest things for me was the fact that Chelsea was like, Jody says we can be friends if I just fall off the roof to my death. And the fact that one day the boys were outside doing whatever it is that boys do outside. And the oldest brother looked up into his sister's window and thought that she he would see her. But when he looked back, it wasn't her in the window, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking to you about it. And there was what he described as a cartoon looking pig with wolfish white teeth and laser beam red eyes. <laughs> so he was like, what? Did a double take. Saw the thing like, was I don't know. There. Well, I think he was trying to do like the Looney Tunes ending of like, that, 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 that's all folks. And the dude was like, I'm not having this Looney Tunes Oh, you crap. mean like closing your eyes because you think you're seeing things, but that's not actually real or there. But when you open your eyes, it's still there. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to make an aside to Looney Tunes though. With we already Porky got a Pig. Looney Tunes. Uh, mention in our video when nature spirits oh uh, well you get another one porky pig <laughs> wow because at the end of the thing he stutters That's rough that is not a good comparison i think it is well just imagine that cartoon character with teeth and, and laser, laser red eyes. eyes i know Jeez, that's why it's scary <laughs> anyways so he races upstairs to go find his sister however his sister is not in her room big shocker but what is in the room is the rocking chair, and it is doing a dance, going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth really, really fast, like someone's trying to win like a championship knitting contest or something. And he was like, not cool. <laughs> so the other thing is that the walls would ooze green slime. Literally. Literally. Not from SpongeBob, <laughs> but actually. Uh, it's really weird. So the other thing about walking around because you know George Lutz would wake up at 3 15 in the morning and go outside for a stroll I guess when they would wake up in the morning because they moved in after Christmas time when they would wake up and there would be snow on the ground because it's New York um they would see cloven footprints leaving the front of their house could that be deer too though mm-hmm. they have cloven footprints they do I don't know why but people they are different yeah I think Mr. Tumnus from Narnia, but also there could be deer. I don't know. I asked this man spirit and he thinks it's just people. They were freaked out. Probably just more of an illusion. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was their quotes, quotation, finger quote things, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't like paranormal. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Got it. Yeah. It's really weird. Yeah. (laughs) So... I was going to talk about something next, and now I don't know what I Oh, so after all of this weird stuff happened and the Lutz family moved out, because that happens 28 days after they move in, there was paranormal investigators that came in, or like investigators, and this was in the 70s. So when they did- the Warrens? 
I don't think it was the Warrens. Ah. There was no people there mm-hmm. that were mediums or psychics as gotcha. far as I understand. Mm-hmm. But they took pictures of the house. Okay. And it's like 70s photography. So there's no Photoshop. Apparently, if you look up Amityville boy photo or the boy Amityville. Oh, I, I think I've seen that. Have you? But it's like a very famous photo, but I don't I didn't know where it was from. Mm, it's an apparition of like the youngest boy. Does he look like someone? He looks exactly like how he should have looked when he was alive. Same age, same face, everything. Yeah. I don't know what that is. We can talk about it at the end when I'm done. Okay. If you want. I just wanted to talk about it before I forgot. Yeah. So all of these really, really weird things happen. So we talked about, you know, the demon trying to uh, blame his fart on Jesus. Well, as the stench would radiate through the house, whether he was blaming it or it was blaming it on Jesus or not, the family was like, geez, there's not any air fresheners to deal with this. So we need to open the windows because everything stinks. So they, when the family would try to open the windows to get rid of the smell in the house, that would just randomly start, I don't know, wafting through every room. The windows wouldn't open. Only some of the windows would open. And it was like windows that wouldn't be helpful to get the smell out of the house. So one day this happened of the 28 days since they lived there. And the oldest brother was opening one of the windows and he finally was able to get it open. So his younger brother came in and was like, hey, were you able to get those window that window open? And his brother with his hands laid on the windowsill looked back behind himself to talk to his brother and say, yeah, brah, I got this door, this uh, window open. It ain't no match for me. The window proceeded to slam shut so violently on his hands that I guess the bones just became like... Disintegrated. Powder, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> owie. <laughs> um, and then once they tried to get the window to open again to get off of his hands because he's like, oh, no, my filet of G's. It wouldn't open until they stopped trying. Uh-huh. Uh, is that the one that bothers you? Because you got your arms, your hands, like, in your armpits. Like, oh, no. No. No? <laughs> I just think it's interesting that they, like, left him like that to don't, come back. <laughs> like, don't leave me. Yeah, well, once they did, that's when the door opened, though. Yeah. You know. So he went downstairs with his little broken phalanges and... And his mom and the rest of his family were in the kitchen. He sat down at the table, put his hands on top of the table. And while his mom was reaching into the freezer to get some ice for him, I guess the family all perceived a man in the doorway of the kitchen. And this apparition walked across the room through the table that the son with the hands was sitting at. And when he walked through the table, his apparition also passed through the boy's hands and once the apparition situated himself on the stool next to the boy when the boy looked back down at his hands that the apparition had walked through they were miraculously healed and the only evidence of the incidents that remains or did remain was a hook in his left pinky it's all an illusion dude my pinky's not straight so yeah, my one friend smashed their finger in a car door and it she can't put it together with the rest of her fingers flat. It just like sticks up crooked. <laughs> I think that's what you're talking about. That's a fun it's party not trick. not a like his finger is oddly shaped. It's like he can't move it type of thing. Mm. Yeah. I had an uncle that cut off his finger that's on a lawnmower. <laughs> on a lawnmower? He was a very accident prone person. He also, he also had a boat. And the boat dock people called him and were like, hey, we think your boat is taking on some water. And he's like, I just bought this boat. There's no way it's taking on water. And they're like, okay, well, you need to come get it because it's you have sinking. to figure out what's happening. And he's like, well, how much water is in it? And they're like, about an inch, maybe less. And he's like, okay, it probably just rained. <laughs> so he got a call two weeks later. It they said, sink. you need to come get your boat. And he's like, okay, I'll be out there. And he's like, no, 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 sir. You have to come have someone get your boat because it's at the bottom is of it the sank? lake. Dear God. So he ended up having to take the boat out, pay thousands of dollars to get it actually unsubmersed from wherever he had it docked. And then the only thing that he thought to do was to take it apart piece by piece and lay every single part of it individually in his front yard to dry. It well, rained I the mean, next day. Wow. 
<laughs> he clearly was not meant to have that boat. He has clearly been not meant to have a lot of things. Well, there's been a lot of incidents with him. Jesus. Those are just two that are my favorite. <laughs> God. Anyways, what were we talking about? Um, oh, smashing windows, fingers in a window. Yeah. So all of those really weird things happened. And the weirdest of them all, which Em has already talked about and I've touched upon, was the dad went downstairs and since he was, uh, George was like, I'm going to make this into my super cool office. It's a fully finished basement. He uh, stumbled upon a weird door that was not in the actual floor plans of the house. And when he opened the door, it revealed a small room that is entirely painted red. Lol. Lol. Which is what I explained to you guys. And I mean, I don't know why he thought this was a good idea, but he was like, hey, Fido, can you stop hanging yourself for a second? Come check out this weird, creepy crawl space I found in the basement. And the dog was like, nope, Bill. The dog would refuse to go into the room. Yeah, would not even get close enough to the basement. Would start trying to, you know hang himself on other various objects to get away. So that's not cool. And the fact that Emily was like, there's this weird I thing on the first a floor. small room, either in the basement or on the first floor, that has red, like, raining down from it. Dude, God, it's so weird. I can't <laughs> deal with it. So the very last night, the night that rocked them to the core, if you will, was a weird one. I mean, it wouldn't be normal. They wouldn't be, like, having tea. And they're like, well, I guess we should just stop as, like, the father and the mother are sipping coffee and the children are, like, talking to things that aren't there, swatting at flies, and Jesus is doing the funky chicken on the side of the wall and, like, green slime is oozing through the walls. No, no, no. It took the fact that they woke up one night and George Lutz looked to see his wife in the bed next to him only... It's not that she wasn't in the bed next to him. It's just that she was levitating in the air. Normal things. Next to him. (laughs) Well, you don't levitate while you sleep. And when she turned to be like, what am I doing? He he saw her face. That would be a good way to wake up. Not as a beautiful blushing wife, but as a 90-year-old woman. And he was like, oh, no, this is worse than that. You're levitating. You're ugly. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) The yeah, no. horror. I think I would really enjoy waking up to the fact that I'd be floating. I, I would, would look down at my boyfriend and be like, why are you on the ground? And then be like, oh, no. How do I get down from here? That's it? Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, all of this absolute madness is happening in their bedroom. I guess down the hall or wherever the other bedroom was, the two boys were sharing a room, which... Again, I'm not I'm not taking away from the validity that green slime can ooze through walls or the fact that uh, all of these other things could happen, allegedly, according to the Lutz's book. But this bedroom, this house had five bedrooms. It had five bedrooms, and two boys are sharing a room. And Emily goes, well, if that was happening, I wouldn't want to sleep by myself. And I'm like, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. However, yeah, exactly. according to the source that I read, the beds were apparently allegedly cemented to the floor of the rooms. Mm-hmm. So two beds were in one room, supposedly cemented to the floor. But while the parents are experiencing their own absolute illusion from I don't know, a different dimension. Um, the the dad's like trying to tie a balloon string to his wife and put like facial cream on her. The boys are in their beds. They're not levitating. No, no, no. They're levitating by association because miraculously the beds have unconcreted themselves from the floor and they're doing the bump and grind whacking into each other. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you get yourself out of that situation <laughs> to first call a priest and be like, hey, I need another blessing or just to get out of the house. I would be too worried that if I get out of the bed, I fall well, underneath the bed and then it like drops. It probably stopped at some point. That thing got to run out of energy at some point. You know how in like scary movies where like the bed is floating and they're like freaking out and then the parent somehow is able to get into the door and everything falls to the ground. Kind of like that. Like the cat in the hat. I've never seen the cat in the hat. 
Why? Because that sounds weird. It was a book before it was a movie. Yes, but uh, having a man in a weird cat costume with children is a little bit odd. And two blue-haired monsters called Thing 1 and Thing 2 that completely yeah, that doesn't run sound mayhem in the weird house. Weird to you? They clean it up before the parents get home. Rather watch some horror films. <laughs> Anyways, that was the last night that the Lutz family stayed in the ha house. And different, I don't know, accounts say, oh, they called the priest and the priest was like, fizzuck that. You guys just need to get out. I'm not coming to bless the house again. <laughs> exactly. And then the other uh, account is that whether he said that or not, he came out and was like, all right, we're going to bless this house. And when they did, I guess a like menagerie of voices choired all together and were saying, will you please stop? And I need you to do it like Becky with the big butt because that's apparently how the evil spirits or whatever spirits were in the house said it. Like, not, oh, no, will you please stop? You're taking my energy. No. It was like, you need to get out of here because we don't have time for you because we're out back behind the Walmart talking some smack. Smack. (laughs) So they were like, will you uh, please stop? Thanks. And the family was like, That's the final straw. We can't live here anymore. So they were so frightened by this that they literally left every belonging that they had in the house, absolutely GTFO'd out to the max, and then moved to California. Because it's the farthest place away that they could go. (laughs) Jesus. (laughs) Uh, Dramatic or necessary. You decide. That's all I got for you. Well, then did you talk about the stairs? (gasps) Oh, yeah. I always forget about your stair thing. So the other thing... And I, I want to say, because M says, I was wondering, I kept asking the Native guy, the, the Native American, if they were being possessed. And he's like, no, they were being physically, like, manipulated. And I feel like some people that are listening to this might go, well, what's the difference? <laughs> I think the difference between possession and physical manipulation is, like, when you physically manipulate an object. Or if I were to physically grab M's hand and be like, I love you, hold my hand forever. She yeah, would- it's like the difference between, like, puppet master stuff so like those puppets on strings that would be physically manipulating something however being possessed is like taking over your mind kind of energy yeah exactly (laughs) so possession you don't have control over your mind whereas manipulation you just don't have control over your body because if i grab m's hand right now with my severely sweaty (laughs) grammy one she is going to fully be able to cognitively go don't touch my hand like that uh vine where you put your hand on the person in the school bus and they just yeah but the the reason why I thought things were possessed is because I see, like, people on the stairs and, like, a spirit going through them. So that's my perception of they're getting possessed. But this Native American man was like, no one was possessed. Do you think that thing has enough energy to possess things? It doesn't. So what actually happened was the oldest son, I believe, and the mother were in an argument And as the mother was walking up the stairs, the son was following her for whatever argumentative reason or argument resolution reason. And he said that a spirit so forcefully shot through his body that it propelled his physical body up the rest of the way to the stairs. And he landed at like where the top of the stairs were. And then he said that the spirit flew into his mother. And when she looked at him, she had that weird glazy look as well and then snapped out of it. And they both were like, what just happened? Yeah. Which was weird. It is weird. (laughs) So what do you think about now that you know, you know, all of the stuff that M saw, the things that I was able to find on the interwebs about the actual paranormal activity, which was really hard, by the way, because the people that the Lutz family wrote the book, oh, that's the other things. So the Lutz family wrote a book about their, you know, recount of everything that happened in the 28 days that they lived in the home. And then since then, a lot of, you know, renditions in movie form and book form have been made about the paranormal aspect of the Amityville house. But I guess the book... I had a ghost writer, which I think is funny. And the ghost Unintended. The ghost writer wrote on behalf of the Lutz family and the priest that was involved in the house a couple of times. 
And it wasn't until years later, because there was so much media spec speculation that the ghostwriter finally admitted, yeah, it was all just a romanticized version of, you know, any type of paranormal things that we could find. And it wasn't until after the ghostwriter said something that the priest agreed with the ghostwriter. However, there are documentaries of the Lutz family children talking about their account of things, and they absolutely seem shooketh. And they, to this day, still don't say that anything that is in the book is not true at all. They 100% say that that is true fact, and it is what it is. The other weird thing is George Lutz was thought to have participated in occult activity, and the, his stepchildren also said, yes, we saw our stepdad doing weird occulty stuff when we lived in the home, and that is the rest of the paranormal things. But the thing with the boy in the photo really freaks me out because I looked at it once and like it's not like they could doctor the photo. And I guess once they got the photo developed, even the seven people that were in the investigation were like, we did not see that when we were there. And the fact that it's on the photo creeps us out. Yeah, I can't tell if it's the actual boy or the spirit looking like the boy. Can you show me it? I try not to look try at it. Try to describe too much. it. Because I see it over there and I had to look it up because I was like, this thing's eyes are glowing. Okay. Usually when I perceive spirits, they're like closer to me, but this thing is like hiding behind my couch on the other side of the room and I only see its face and it's like eyes are glowing. So I looked it up and I was like, this thing, like its eyes can't be glowing in the photo too. Is it in the middle of the couch where the two vents of the fireplace come together for the door? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's over there. I just see a vague outline of where a head should be, but I can't see things like physically like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's over there. And I hear little boy voices really far in the distance, but they're glitchy, mm. which is why I think it's the dark thing. However, I feel like because I'm trying to talk to whatever made this thing exist, I'm now talking to the dark thing, so I don't know if it's lying to me. Do you feel like it's wearing a striped shirt? It's like a collared black and white shirt. Yeah, it has a collared shirt. Mm -hmm. I don't really see his shirt because he's behind the couch. Mm. Well, I, see, I think like, the thing this that... Much yeah. Like from the shoulders up. Yeah. Well, I think the thing that you're seeing is the scary thing. Yeah. There's no way it's not. It's fucking horrifying. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, God. Hide your Jesuses. He's going to fart and blame on it. Um. So anyways, I think that what you're seeing is the scary thing. But I think. Is it I, the thing that made this picture, though? No, I don't think so. No? Let me see it again. Yeah. So I can't tell if it's. The actual little boy or the dark thing that looks like the little boy saying like, hey, I can look like that. It's really easy for me to do that. See, I don't know how I feel about the photo. I feel like uh, the mother explains it to me as sometimes they still are in the house, however, or at least at that time they were. Yeah. But and the only reason they were in the house is because she feels that they were taken from the fact that they could live and grow up in a house that that was that was that cool mm -hmm. so it's important for her as a mother to allow allow her children to grow up in the house that she feels they had every right to but it was taken away from them yeah got you but it's entirely separate from any other weird things that happen in the house yeah because the way she shows it to me is you don't see us and people don't see us if we choose to reside there in the years after the incident because the way time and space works for them is they can be there however. Whenever they want. Yeah. They, she shows me as it being above whatever weird place it is spatially and dimensional wise of where the dark thing is. So the dark thing that's in the house resides physically with the house. However, yeah. when she visits the house with her family so that they could grow up there, it's in a time and space almost as if it was an or alternate universe. like in a universe. different plane. Yes. Got you. But it's still there. Yeah. So. It's like the upside down. Yeah. I feel like that picture may be valid, but it's like there was a glitch in 
the way the space was layered. Got you. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. (laughs) But anything else that people have seen in that house, like the Lutz family, is definitely just a representation, illusion, figment of their imagination that was created by the weird thing in the red room. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Because all of those things can be explained as an illusion. Mm -hmm. The flies, the hands. People's faces. People's faces. Yeah. Yeah. You also said something about the uh, man in the house. The dad? Yeah. Yeah. About him being in the occult. Uh Uh-huh. Did you talk about that in here? Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. There's no details on it. It's just that... Well, that would be why everything around him is so cold. Yes, because they know he's a source of energy in which they can reap the benefits of. Yeah, because he's literally creating spiritual energy. So that's why... And he's open to it. Yeah, that's why he was manipulated in that way. Because a lot of people are like, only the men were affected. Well, this man was affected because he was adding to the energy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, Butch was being affected because... It was easier to manipulate his uh, reality, I guess. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's wild. I feel better talking about this one. I'm sorry it was a little like out of line, but there's so much information. I can either read off a paper or go on a tangent about information that I learned. <laughs> Which one do you guys want? Bad jokes that help me mediate my uneasy Anxiety. feelings? Anxiety. <laughs> I made crop dusting jokes and Jesus fart jokes at least three or four times. Drink every time you do that. You'll get wasted. Sure wasted. (laughs) So what do you think, Liv? Oh, I definitely think it's a weird thing that is able to manipulate people's minds. Because when Mm -hmm. we talk to dark things, they literally tell you the opposite. Yeah, they 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 make you feel horrible. That's just what they do. Which is why I'm seeing a little boy across from me. (laughs) It's disgusting. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. He's not as cool as Georgie. Yeah, no, Georgie was funny. (laughs) He had some good puns. (laughs) Oh, God. They were horrifying, but you know. Whatever. You guys want more paranormal spoopy stuff? Because next week we're talking about, well, we're going to rein it in. We're going to make it a little more spiritual. And we're going to talk about the Akashic Records. Because if you guys don't know, you all have spirit guides. And Em and I, at least so far, have, as mediums, doing professional readings. Because we're professionals or something now. Um... (laughs) Everybody has spirit guides, and we've noticed that at least one of your spirit guides is from the Akashic Records. So we've gotten a lot of weird information about it, but we're also going to research it, see what we can find, and then tell you all about it, because we are your sidekicks to everything metaphysical. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You talking some schmack? Okay, bye.